y'all welcome back to the channel for today's video as you guys can read the title we are going to be fixing the 8th gen's I guess biggest transmission problem which would be the second gear grind now on stock FA5's or FG2's the 8th gen Civic SI in general you have a delayed clutch master cylinder what that means is when it comes to high rpm revvings and driving and shifting you get that second gear grind you get that noise and you don't want that so hybrid because that's what we rock the gang over here, bro. No, don't get none of that boom tune crap. Gang. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> Hybrid offers an OEM. OEM. Clutch master cylinder along with OEM K-Series Slave offered all together as a CMC replacement kit so you can have those eight, thousand nine thousand ten thousand rpm shifts without worrying about scratching second gear due to the delay valve that's in the stock oem unit so if you're new here to the channel my name is zosh i own an eighth gen si that i'm building for grid life slash time attack racing and i'm glad you're here so follow along i hope you enjoy me and what i do these you hear me and hear me bro like they don't hear me bro but they gonna hear me today i gonna hear me I also have a supercharged K swap Integra that seemed that it's just not gonna ever get done. Bro, like, I don't even have a turbo setup and it's taking me turbo setup time to get my car. I just, I'm sad, bro, I'm sad. But without further ado, roll that intro and let's get to work. <laughs> You see the boxes, you see the HR boxes, and no, this not means hiring resources, baby. This is hybrid racing, playboy. So here is our brand new K-Series slave cylinder, and here is our clutch master cylinder kit. I have I have a link down in the description box below where you can purchase this. And also remember, you guys can get 5% off if you use promo code Zosh at checkout. Save 5% off your entire order, so order big. Get those huge savings. That's what we do over here on the Zosh channel, baby BBC channel. You hear me? Big black consciousness because we're smart. <laughs> so basically what we're gonna be doing today is replacing this slave cylinder along with this clutch line that goes all the way tucked up in the back somewhere over there. You guys can't even see it, but the CMC is way over there. And this is the clutch slave cylinder right there. I gotta remove the intake, battery can stay put. So this line right here is what we're gonna be basically removing. I'm just gonna cut it because I don't need it anymore. So I'm probably gonna cut it from there, remove this bracket and then cut it from like right here, remove that. And then yeah, so this cow will have to come up. Uh, intake will have to be removed so we can have more space in order to do everything we have to do. And then we go inside the car, unloosen two 12 millimeters that hold the CMC in place. And then we should be good and golden, son. Oh snap, son. Oh ho ho. Type R trunk just arrived. So FD conversion soon on the way, baby. Okay, so let's get it started for today. Um, I went to Harbor Freight yesterday to pick up a pipe cutter because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be cutting um, these lines so it can make it easier for um, ourselves. And I will link an install guide down below in case you wanna do it your way. But I'm just doing it the way I found on a YouTube video. Um, yeah, two 12 mil bolts, maybe they're 14s, they're either 12 or 14s right there to hold the slave in. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the two 10 mil brackets that's on the uh, mount. So you got one there and then you have one on the firewall on the side frame of the car. And once you loosen those two mounts, um, you don't have to worry about loosening the, uh, the uh, 10 mil from the, um, C-clip, like removing the C-clip and removing that 10 mil. So I'm just gonna remove them from the brackets and then use my pipe cutter to like cut it somewhere back here or something and somewhere up top. So yeah, simple. All right, so there is actually two 10 mils that hold the bracket onto the side frame of the car. And there's one up top, two on the side. Once you have that loose, get your pipe cutter and then just cut it, I don't know, like, I don't know, the further you can go back, the better, honestly. And then from there, you just loosen it from here, the two 12 mils, and this whole thing would just come up. And then you can cut it from there. So using a pipe cutter, using a pipe cutter is mad simple, bro. So you just put it on, let's say you put it on the lot, the aluminum wire, whatever pipe you're using, and then you use this knob, 
you want to go clockwise with it until it closes and you keep going until it cut and this thing is the true pimp look at that look at that got it all cut off pimp now i just got to use my long extension to 12 mils remove the slave from the oe spot and then pull it up and then go inside the cabin remove the two i think 14 or 12 millimeters that hold the uh cmc in place and yeah we're bro we're almost there we're almost there already yeah but keep following along because a lot of you guys have issues and i'm i'm going to explain why you have those issues and it's not a defect so keep watching stuff removed got the bolts right there now we got to just go ahead and remove the cmc but uh yeah i guess if you want you can keep this slave cylinder if you want to have like a backup um if you want to and you could keep this line and sell it in case somebody wants to use it so remember you always gotta hustle you always gotta hustle pimp so let's go inside the car show you exactly what you gotta do oh so this gotta come off this tray which is up top with a little screw and just kind of like pops out yeah pops out of place all right once this removes you have one i guess i got up the iso but there's one i'm up the iso real quick hold on hold on fam all right so you have one 12 mil or 14 mil and that's 12 mil one 12 mil bolt right there and then one on the other side you guys can see but my lighting is trash but there's one on the other side that side then you got the clevis make sure you remove the c-clip and the clevis right there so you can detach it from the pedal itself and yeah closer and closer boys you're getting closer and closer clevis is out bolts are loosened i wish the oh there we go we got better lighting right now and there's the c-clip i use a pair of needle nose pliers pry it loose that's the c-clip 12 millimeter bolts I didn't have to use no fancy swivel lick sockets, just a uh, regular 12 and an extension. And then that was it. Now we just gotta go back in the engine bay and remove it. Okay, so I basically have the old TMC out. Um, you wanna remove that with a pair of needle nose pliers, remove the line, and then you see why you cut it, the shorter the better. So if I cut it right here, it can just easily come out or you can just use a 10 millimeter wrench if you have to just loosen it. Which I probably end up doing because it's right there. I ain't gotta do nothing crazy. But yeah, you wanna have that you wanna have that off and then you wanna have that off so you can remove the whole unit and you could throw this in the trash. But that right there is a delay valve. That big triangular Dorito rotor engine looking thing you see right there, trash. You don't want that. Trash. It is removed and you can see my problem. <laughs> this is kind of bookie wookie. But you actually have to keep this. The pin you see, like the clutch rod pin. The clutch rod itself you need to keep this so you only do the clutch master cylinder kit and case your slave kit is if you're doing a case swapped car but if you're using this on an eighth gen si you need to keep the clutch push rod you need that that's the best way you have the engagement point you need you just cannot just throw it willy-nilly in there and then you hit up hybrid and be like yo you guys sold me a defect no you don't follow directions install guide would be down below and it tells you to use this if you're doing on a car that's already k series but if you're doing it on a k swapped car then you could just do run this right here but if you're not you need to use the clutch rod and i'm gonna show you how to remove it so excuse the mess that is up here let's focus on the two items playboy so right here we have the cmc master kit this comes with a brand new master cylinder and clutch line. And then right here, we have our brand new OEM slave cylinder. So you got an OEM slave and you get an OEM CMC. And you guys see that? Made in Japan. This is the real deal stuff. This is not no OEM replacement. This is actually OEM, son. Yeah, buddy. So that clevis we have to remove, and I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it. But first, you're gonna need some snap ring pliers, and you gotta get that little grommet thing out. 
But yeah, you first, well, you gotta get your snap ring pliers first, as you guys can see the little two things with the bunny ears, kind of. Um, I, well, damn, GoPro lighting is kind of butt cheeks right now, fam. All right, so I bought these snap ring pliers from Harbor Freight, because that's what we got to use to remove this clip that's in there. And we got to do it on both of them. That's what we got to do, player. So I went ahead and removed the rod from the eighth gen. We're gonna retain the metal piece. So, I mean, not eighth gen, but the SI. We're not gonna use this rod anymore. This rod is gone. We're gonna use this rod, remove this silver piece right here, use that, and then use the C-clip from, I think we'd use this one, because this was like more brand new. So we're gonna use the C-clip, this, we're gonna use these two items and this rod and clevis and all that stuff. And then put the boot back on, protect it. So hope that made sense. If anything, and if anything, there'll be an install guide down below to Hyper Racing on the CMC clutch replacement, master cylinder, all that pimp. All right, bet. <laughs> all right, she's in there, fam. Boot. I decided to use the EM1 uh, C-clip thing, little spring clip or whatever. And yeah, eighth gen rod. Now that we have our brand new CMC ready to go, Let's attach our line. And look at that. Look at that. Look, you see that? They even have a warning label because y'all don't be paying attention. <laughs> but uh, hopefully by you watching this video, you learn. folks you want to rotate it to this side because that's obviously how it goes 14 millimeter crush washer at the bottom crush washer at the top 14 millimeter socket or wrench to tighten it make sure your holes go back on so you don't have to worry about when you put it back in and that's it we good to go let's install this bad girl So I went ahead and took my clutch line underneath my uh, driver's side uh, mount, transmission mount, ran it up here and it's gonna tuck it along, um, probably like around the battery area just to get it to the slave. But uh, yeah, now it's time to put on the slave cylinder. It's kind of crazy how this is called the slave and a master. That's crazy, bruh. That's crazy. I feel like Dr. Umar Johnson, bro. That's crazy. Oh, all right. So this is how your slave should now look. Crush washer on the bottom, crush washer on the top. 14 millimeter up top. And that's it. Then we have the process of getting it bled. Which should be fun because I have no one here to help me bleed this. All right. Slave cylinder is on, negative battery terminal is on, slave is on. Now I just have to bleed it. The neon Power Ranger, what's up? What's up? Dang. Wow. Give my camera a kiss, man. All right, bet. Hey, 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 hold on, hey, hey, hey. Get your ass up with that dirty ass shirt. The back of my shirt is clean, calm down. Do you not see this? The back of, oh, what the f uh. Yeah. Duh. Oh, where that shit come from? Right. Which one to break? Clutch. Duh. Car is all back together. Shout out to Demetrius for coming by, drinking all my damn Sprite. Yaman. Yeah, but it was fresh. We got the clutch bled. So now that you have your CMC in, it's important to adjust it. Now, now on your brake switch, you wanna adjust your pedal height. So basically you wanna have five threads showing on the backside. Make sure you have five threads showing, all right? Now we're gonna adjust 
the uh, free play. So, cause you see this right here? There's no free play. This would ruin your clutch. So in order to adjust your free play on the back of the uh, push rod, clutch rod, loosen your 12 millimeter nut, bring that back and then twist the rod itself either clockwise or counterclockwise until you start to feel resistance. Once you feel resistance, turn it the other way where you're starting to feel resistance, half a turn, and then you will have your free play set or you could just keep adjusting it. Honda recommends 10 to 18 millimeters of free play. So, you know, use your uh, ruler or measuring tape as such to do that. I'm just gonna eyeball it, whatever feels good for me. I'm just gonna go about it if the clutch goes. Eh, it's okay, I have a new clutch anyway, but it's not gonna go. I kinda know what I'm doing, so I'm just, yeah, now letting you guys know what's up. So make sure you listen to what I just said and it will save your clutch. That's about, that's about 10 millimeters. I don't have my ruler on me, but I can just tell. That's about 10 millimeters of free play, which is the minimum you want. Maximum will be 18 millimeters. So you wanna have a little bit of free play. You guys can see, but I hope you guys can see it moving. But yeah, so we got some free play. If you guys install your stuff and it's too stiff, just back this out loose, and then it'll be loose in order for your hand to turn the rod itself. So remember, if you go counterclockwise, if you turn the rod counterclockwise, you will have a hell of a lot of free play. If you turn it clockwise, you will have less free play. So when you turn it till you start feeling resistant, do it, give it a half turn counterclockwise so you can have something like this. Once you do that, make sure all this is tight and everything and you're set. That's it for adjusting your clutch. <laughs> what I should have done to begin with. I am going to be taking out the manual transmission fluid in these Hondas and replacing it with my Torco RTF solution um, transmission fluid. Now, the reason why you might have a grind still after this is because Honda transmission fluid is very thin like it's very thin so like over time I mean this car has 142,000 miles so I'm sure it's due for a transmission flush and changing of that nature it's definitely due for a transmission flush so that's what we're doing so this should definitely help and plus with the Torco RTF you're keeping the gearbox cooler and it's recommended if you have an M factory LSD I don't have an M factory LSD I have the OEM but uh this right here bro bro this is the truth this is the truth. This is the truth, baby. Shout out to my boys over at Torco. So I went by O'Reilly and I bought this Flow Tool Easy Funnel, whatever. It's like a cool thing for the gearbox. So yeah, and they got a filter inside. So yep, use that, put the Torco in there, and then we should go for another drive. Oh my God, the car feels so much better. Wow, the car feels so much better with the transmission flush. RTF fluid. Holy shit. <laughs> this was great. Here we go. Let's go! 
Mexico is the truth, son. Let's f***ing go. That is it. That is the end of the video. My second gear grind is fixed. Torco RTF, hybrid racing CMC, and slave replacement. Also with the braided, stainless steel braided clutch line. Bro, my car feels like I have a stage two clutch in it. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Or maybe it's Maybelline, I don't know. All I know is the car drives phenomenal, bro. Now you guys might ask, yo Zosh, why would you go from Honda manual transmission fluid to the Torco? Honda manual transmission fluid does not like high revving, doesn't like hot temperatures, and it gets watery quickly. Well, not quickly, but the more you drive it and things like you road race your car with, high, uh, with Honda OEM fluid, it like gets, um, it breaks down really easily. So it's like a water based type thing, and that makes me want to grind my teeth. Ugh, ah. Torco, however, is 100% full synthetic fluid. It keeps the gearbox cooler, and it got that blue stuff, baby. It's, bro, it's a night and day difference when you do, like, whenever you go from Honda transmission fluid to like Synchro Mesh type fluid, or Amsoil, or GM Synchro Mesh, or Torco, which I highly recommend recommend because you know I mean they the best it lubricates your gears better and provides more nutrients than Honda manual transmission fluid Honda transmission fluid was geared for like economy based driving you know what I mean like daily driving not really beating on your car like that people might argue with me in the comments argue with you mama I don't care all the fast guys run great fluid and <laughs> shout out to my doll red <laughs> do your research do what works for you all i know is my car drives great i've been running torco and the integra i don't have no grind issues and i track drive my car so hey man it is what it is but all in all i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did enjoy the video leave a like on the video if you did not enjoy the video leave a dislike on the video all in all i love you but i don't give a fuck i love each and every single one of y'all thank y'all for watching and tuning in be sure to use discount code zasha save five percent off at highwayracing.com check the links all down in the description box below check out zasha mfg so i can uh buy wheels for my car thank you and i'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one i'm out peace, peace.